we start with approval of minutes? Do I have a motion? Second. I'll second. Any additions or corrections? No? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Just for the record, I am a board member today, right? Because we need you. Right, yeah. We need you. Yes, we need you, Mark. So I'll make sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Otherwise, I'll stay quiet. Okay. Um, that will be the day. Well, oh, excuse no, me. No, we have a quorum. Oh, we have a quorum now? Yeah. I've got no, a quorum. No, 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 I need five for my yes. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'll be Eric. Because you got me. Can you get me? Okay. Yes. So we need someone else to second. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You should hold the chair. Chair, the chair's out of town, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's get right into our <coughs> resolution EP1. It is about a budget modification. What we've done is we've gotten some uh, state funds that have come through, and it was not in the budget because we don't know how much they're going to give us, so it has to be a budget mod. It is to do the additional, it's to continue, I should say, to help with uh, landlords and um, down payments for people. It is the home and community um, development. So um, do I have a motion to discuss? I'll move it. And second? I'll second. Any questions? Discussion on it? I have a question. What's the criteria and is there a list? How do we go by the list? Dave? So um, this money, it's, it's uh, based on eligibility of the renter, size of the family, cost of the um, potential unit, and uh, whether or not they, for example, have the ability to make the down payment in order to secure uh, this unit. So the money goes directly to the landlords. Um, and it's very individual based on the needs of each uh, applicant. How do they even know to apply? Well, when they, so when uh, we have a waiting list, so if you come up and we call you, Murray, uh, we have an opening, we have a voucher available for you. You go through the process, you go out and find a place, you come back, <coughs> we have to do an inspection, determine if it's, um, health and safety uh, yep. appropriate and then in the process of that you the uh, tenant would say okay so this is a, a two-bedroom and, and he told me it was this much for the rent and this much for uh, the down payment and then you just work the formula based on the through the office. housing office yeah, yes the housing development office yeah oversees it I know we become the MAPA for low-income housing yeah, we could maybe rechange change our badge, you know, <laughs> arming away and put the falling in housing. That might be a good thing. Wasn't that what the statue of liberty was something like? You know, show me your... Oh, we got them all. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, well, um, this is just a continuation of the process that we've been doing. We've been doing it for a while. This would just they set more money. Yeah. So, unannounced. And, hey, here's some more money for that program. Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll thanks. put it in there. But since it wasn't in the budget, that's why we have to do it, because we have to do a budget mm -hmm. mod. Because right. we didn't plan it, because you don't know how much states will ever give us. Or when. Or when. Um, <coughs> do we have a motion to approve? Uh, well, we don't. We have, we have a motion I thought, already, right? Yeah. I thought we had it to discuss. We, no, yeah, but that's... You okay. Put it yeah. on the table, now you just have to report. Okay. So, so I, okay, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? Passes. There we go. Thanks. All right. Resolution number two. This is accepting uh, grant money. What it is, and back in 2017, we did an economic advancement plan that said that we need to figure out what's going on, and we did realize we have a huge lack of water and wastewater treatment. And even in 22, we recognize that we are really behind the eight ball with the development, even if Micron isn't coming in, it still is, we have to have something to do with water and wastewater if we're gonna have any kind of growth. So we're, what this is all about is creating a capital project. Capital project costs $120,000. The state has agreed to give us 60,000 matching and we'll get the other 60,000 out of our economic development fund so it isn't coming out of reserve or fund balance, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And what this capital project is going to do, it's going to have 
a ability to figure out what kind of treatment plants we have, what kind of water do we have, and get an inventory of what we've got, what condition it's in, <clears throat> also give us any of the pros and cons as to should we have an actual authority that would do this or some type of an entity. So at that point, I'd like to have a motion to open it for discussion. I'm very pleased to move this forward. I'll second. Second. Any discussion? Yeah. Um, yeah, we actually did do um, in the original strategic uh, planning, uh, economic development plan. Um, we had an infrastructure study, but um, if this is a good, that's a good time to update that. And uh, you know, really, what we're doing is trying to connect the dots between infrastructure that we already have in the county. Um, and one thing I'd like to talk to Dave about at some point is uh, the idea of having some overlay maps <coughs> of the existing infrastructure. Have it. Do we already have that? Yep. And um, do we also have that for um, so existing water and sewer? Um, it would be nice to be able to also overlay that with uh, even potential um, business uh, sites, uh, um, bus routes, things like that, so we can you know really really visually see uh, how we connect the dots. Sure. So um, when I say we have it, we have what has been reported to the real property office and once um, a community like does a water district if they they don't always do it but if they send the, the information to the real property then they change the code on that parcel to indicate that there's public water public sewer there so everything that has been identified to the real property office um, we've mapped but Part of the study will help us understand if there's pieces that we don't know about that are out there. Yeah, just to wrap up then. So that also uh, will provide lots of information that we can share with, you know, to support uh, communities going out for grants for individual projects. And help us decide, like, if there's two that could work together, right. should the county also be a partner? What role can we play? Um, and should it be the county or should it be this other? Yeah infrastructure entity. Potentially prioritizing <coughs> some areas as right. well. Thank you. Now, information is power. Yes, Mary. Dave, right. explain to me, please, infrastructure entity. Who who are we going to have look at this? Are we going to get an engineering so, group that works with wastewater? <clears throat> Who's going to conduct the study? Yeah. Yes. Uh, we actually um, twice went out for proposals and we didn't get responses either time. It's, uh, this happened um, right after everybody started coming back to work from COVID. Uh, people have lots of work um, and this is a lot of work in itself. So <clears throat> we did get a proposal um, from CNS engineers after we started calling people saying, hey, um, we put this out twice and it seems like something that would be appropriate for your firm. We had a couple of them that said that they would give us uh, responses. Only one actually followed through on that and um, because and Holly's here, um, but on, on her guidance because we were out twice, got nobody to respond, we're free to choose the one response that we did get. When, when date was the last request put out? Or what? Uh, late last year. Um, I think we did two. Both of them were last two. year. Late last year, like in December. Yeah. Would it be appropriate to rebid it? Um, we could, but it's going to take you know a couple more months in the process, and we're already like a year behind where we would hope we had hoped to be. I mean, we, we, we just put it out the bid twice. We put it out, then we called the people and, and right. asked them, please give us a proposal. Yeah. You know, it seems to me problem. the county's done its due diligence in trying to find somebody. And as Holly okay. says, it is within the range of what is appropriate. We've done it, and he's called. And we good called time. and asked good people good to send us quotes, and only one yeah. engineering firm did. Yeah. So, we and that was CNS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you uh, asked about uh, my use of the term infrastructure entity, I was uh, trying to be generic about whether or not at some point we might form like a, 
Oswego County Sewer Authority or Water Authority or just Infrastructure Authority. Part of this study is going to uh, like provide us the data about what's out there. And in the process of gathering that, you know, these guys will be talking to the communities that own those assets and uh, we'll get some feedback about whether or not people are interested in working together, uh, whether or not they want to get out of the business, um, or what kind of help that, that they need and, and how can we best uh, uh, provide that for them. Well, Dave, I've mentioned Mineto a lot. It's a big facility. It's permitted currently for one million gallons a day. But it has the capacity to double to two million right. with appropriate upgrades. I just feel uncomfortable if we get a group of people that don't have an engineering background or a wastewater background to oversee something like this. It, that just makes me nervous. Well, and that's part of the reason we're doing this is because we have wastewater treatment facilities that are working at twenty percent capacity, like Mineto and well, some I mean, others. That's, right? that's a huge study. capacity, right? So there. we're trying to what we're trying to do is kind of just coordinate how this develops so that if there are two communities, maybe they can share one unit instead of making one by themselves. And so as a as a county, we're just trying to give guidance to the because we can't force it on them right on the town. So we're just trying to help coordinate, give guidance, and uh, come up with a plan. Uh, we met with Senator Wright about a month ago, what they've got going on in the North Country, about how they kind of controlled their growth and how they go about doing it. And one of the ideas that he had is that instead of each little town having a guy monitoring their, their wastewater treatment facility, it's an engineer that mm -hmm. they have to pay. Hire one. We hire one or two for the county and they can cover all of them. Right. So we'll help coordinate that one. So that's that's in an attempt to that. join them. Yes. Right. Well, so um, what Dank does is provide services. They don't own uh, many assets, but they provide services, and, and sometimes they provide financing to help, like pay for a sewer, a sewer or a water district, and then they make an agreement with that uh, municipality for mm -hmm. some kind of usage fee, and they get the money back over a long period of time. Would you need a wastewater engineer to oversee it? You need a licensed operator for every treatment Our plant, mind. but. You could have <laughs> expensive for towns to keep to maintain. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, could, we could help them on the county level. I think so. if Mineto had some appropriate guidance on this to know what direction to go, I think he just needs guidance. Yeah, and so I, in, in this example, um, once we have a good uh, set of data that shows here's Mineto, here's Oswego Town, here's the city of Oswego, we can get those three people in the room and say, "Look, here's everything that exists. You know, how do we how do we connect all this? How do we make this grow and utilize the capacity?" Um, so that's the purpose of this: is to kind of know what exists, so we can talk to the people about how we can make that better. We had this conversation yesterday. So this exact same conversation. Good. Well, it was a little different. You said, how come it's not done yet? Yeah. Well, I don't think we can wait any longer. No. Yeah. We, I think this exact study will help a lot with what... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I just want to say, <laughs> on behalf of Operation Oswego County and the County of Oswego IDA, we strongly commend and support the county in doing this. I mean, this is, this is needed. Um, it, as you said, regardless of Micron coming, I mean, this is something we need to do uh, you know, we the IDA had done some studies looking at the village of Phoenix wastewater treatment plant and looking at what needs to be done. But to my knowledge, there's never been anything done for the other plants, and, and especially looking at in, in coordination with how they should work together, how how they could work together. Um, each plant has unique environmental challenges. Each plant has unique capacity challenges, and we need to better understand that um, to know you know what priorities should be for for funding for for trying to to uh, prioritize plants getting upgraded or which ones should be even. In, in which communities are are interested in collaborating with us? Yeah. So it's it's, it's kind of like taking group. several silos and bring them into one, so that everybody knows everything about the whole thing and look at it as a whole picture. And without this, as he says, very independent. People tend to be very independent, especially villages and towns. So, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. Okay. Uh, resolution three is we're pulling it. We need a little extra information, so we'll be pulling that. And so let's go right into committee review and decisions. ARPA. 
Oh, yes, we'll just pass those around and we can sign it. Um, Dave, you want to go through the ARPA for us? Sure, thank you. You have several before your committee uh, today. And uh, the first one, uh, Soil Harbor Festivals, they applied as many not-for-profits do based on uh, the economic harm that they suffered during the pandemic. They verified a um, <clears throat> significant amount of loss uh, over the two years that they were shut down. Um, they actually uh, asked for 965000 in change. And um, the task force has suggested uh, $60,000. Discussion? I just saw an article on television about, didn't the city match that 60? Uh, the city did make a contribution of 60,000. I don't know that it was in a match or referred as a match, yeah, but paid for it. Well, that was my question about it, was right. did the city contribute anything? Because to me, it's the city's deal, not the county's. I'm glad right. that because I've signed so many of these yesterday. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're interested in, because it does bring people to the community and you know, with the ed text that gets collected uh, through that uh, it does return to us. So anytime we can get people coming here for two or three days, you know, we're Great. interested in helping. Dave, my question is this. Yes, at Harbor Fest, wonderful. There's a lot of drunk people on the street. All good. But what is the cost? basis here. What does it cost the city to put it on? My brother said it was unbelievable. The amount of work and overtime and the chefs bringing in. I just like to know how much does this cost versus what it brings in? Because honestly, I'm not sure. The residents get furious. My parents lived right near it. I've given to it, I've participated in it, I understand the positives. But I just would like to know that the numbers came here. Because I think it costs us a ton of money. Yeah, so I'm not privy to um, what the city's expenses are associated with this, with the cleanup and the extra fire and police and everything. You've got tents, you got crews yeah. going for weeks and right. weeks and weeks. And I just, I just wish we were putting the money into infrastructure and things more than this. But I mean, the fireworks are nice. I understand that. Um, I just think it's the city's deal, not the county's. Well, with respect to the ARPA funds, you know, um, it's open to. It's meant to offset the. Uh, harm that the pandemic caused, and, and we can't really dis discriminate uh, based on the location of somebody's business, um, and they prove to be eligible. Um, and the part of festivals, I think you could say, fits into the travel tourism sector, um, since they do draw people here. So that's another like high priority uh, area that uh, the Treasury Department suggested that these funds were appropriate for. So this is just a suggestion and uh, it's the legislature's. So Dave, we still have to vote though in a block on this, all these things, right? We can't go well, by. So the purpose of having these all together is so that you don't have, in this case, seven or eight uh, separate resolutions and drag the meeting out. And to me, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a legislator, um, I'm not uh, in the leadership position to be able to say you can or can't do this, but it would seem to me uh, that during the discussion of this resolution on the floor, somebody could suggest that one or all or any of these are amended in, in any way. Well, um, just like you would any resolution, you want to make an amendment while it's under debate, I think you're free to do that. As far as I know. Well, I'm just saying that I, I proposed this from the beginning, and it's too bad if we have to sit at the meeting a little longer. It's what we signed up for. And if that's an inconvenience, then don't run. But as far as I'm concerned, if you have to sit there till midnight and get the job done, 
then do it. But this black stuff, I mean, I just, you know, you got stuff you like, you got stuff you don't like, but then you end up taking the lump. I, I just, it drives me crazy, but that's okay. Well, don't we individually <clears throat> vote on these in committee? Yes. Yes. So now is the time to discuss it, similar to any other thing that comes Each on our agenda. Right. Right. So it's kind of like if we did that to have a separate one for this, it would be we'd be opening up every single mm -hmm. resolution that we have, and it would to be no. redebated. Yeah, to be redebated. And this is where committee. we really it goes through our committee. If this committee says yes to a Swego Harbor Fest, but no to the next one, that's our purview at this point. Mm -hmm. So we're sending it on. But before we have any more discussion, uh, I need to have a motion. I, I will move to uh, to, to pass this our pro project at the. Uh, Recommended sixty thousand dollars. Okay, second. I'm going to second that because I think that the task force did a good job with reducing the the amount from the request to what they're giving them, and we've already set a precedent, I guess, to do a Struggle City project. So I'll second it. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the Swigo Harbor Festivals for sixty thousand. Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, so it fails. It fails. Oh, it fails because we only have three. Mal didn't vote. I didn't vote. Oh, you didn't? No, no. yeah. You, you voted. I voted. I put my hand up. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. I should three verbalize three. it. So it's three, three, three A's, one nay. Right, so it doesn't pass. It doesn't pass because you've got eight core. you got, you got, you got to have four to pass. Four to pass. Okay. okay. So it fails. All right. There you go. You there you go. See, so you got it. <laughs> now you've got your say. Okay, um, I'd like a motion to uh, open up for Young Men's Christian Association of Oswego. I'll move it. Second. Second. And let's open it up for discussion. Dave, you want to give us some that? Yeah, originally we had an application from the executive director for like $1.7 million. And it was uh, a lot of um, maintenance on the building. And... Uh, those things aren't really ARPA eligible. You know, um, we 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 work hard with the applicants to make sure that we can tie their request into the pandemic some way uh, that we're allowed to under the law. So they uh, resubmitted uh, strictly on the lost revenue during the pandemic, which uh, is the same as uh, Harvard festivals and, and many others. Um, and they came back with, or we were able to come to a number of 156,776. Um, and that's net after we took out any COVID help that they also received from other places. And then the uh, task force simply rounded that number to 150. That's what they suggested. Discussion? Um, they're associated with the YMCA, correct? It is the YMCA. It is, this is YMCA, oh. yes. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's Just what it stands spell, for. Just spell it out. Yeah, they already did that. It's been so long since I heard it. You guys stood up and all did that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Dave, just, I know you love me to ask questions, so I Absolutely. just want to continue to do so. Um, it is based, I mean, I, the Y does a great job, no questions about that, but it is a religious organization, is it not? Um, I think maybe in the uh, in in formative Israel. days, uh, it, it was more uh, Christian based uh, than, than it is today. I think they just never changed the name over the years. I mean, if you look at everything that goes on there uh, and all of the various people, I don't think that you would find that uh, it's re it's limited to people who call themselves Christians, I think. Um, well, I mean, I'm just saying, does it leave us open to helping other religious organizations if they apply? The separation of church and state, correct. No? No. Uh, we've often uh, worked with Salvation Army. Um, you know, this mm -hmm. when we talk about uh, community, related uh you know organizations that that are there the things that they're doing it's about the accomplishments it's about the work that they do it's about you know uh, just having places for kids to go and do things that are uh 
you know, improve their quality of life and hopefully improve their health if they're active and, and if it helps them become good citizens, all the better. I, I don't see any any problem with it. It's a it's a public organization and everyone's and entitled that. No, but everyone's good. entitled to go. Right. You don't have to be a Christian to go there. So it's not the right. same as supporting a church. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I haven't seen anything in the uh, ARPA legislation that would suggest that um, we shouldn't help organizations based on anything other than their need and their qualifications, right? Any other discussion? I'd just like to point out that they spend a quite, quite a bit of money and time on child care as well. And we need that. And we desperately you know, need They're that. constantly expanding. There's a need. All right. Yes. And mm -hmm. I'll just I'll remind you that you have supported the Fulton YMCA previously with an ARPA request. Okay. Always a good thought, though. I understand where you're coming from, Marie. I do. Yeah. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Okay. The next one down on our list, um, the Lacona Cable Trail BFW. Can I have a motion to open it for discussion? I'll make a motion. Second. Okay, Dave, you want to? Yeah, so again, another not-for-profit demonstrated uh, <laughs> lost revenue over the period. A lot of the things that um, places like the BFWs do, um, they were not able to continue with. Uh, hosting weddings in their hall, uh, regular chicken barbecues, just the, the regular not-for-profit uh, typical fundraising. Uh, activities and they did demonstrate uh, more than 30,000 but they only asked for 30 and that's what the um, <clears throat> task force suggested. Did they have any skin in the game? So in this case, uh, so there's not like a project to say well it's a hundred thousand dollars and I'm asking you for 30 and we're going to put in 70. This is strictly based on here's our records, here's the money that we lost as a result of being shut down for two years. We're just trying to recoup some of it. Okay. So, yeah, their their skin is what they already lost. That's right. Any other questions? I say give the veterans their money. Anything they want. Yes, right. absolutely. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Um, next, Midway Drive-In Theater. Uh, motion to open it for discussion. I'll make a motion. Second. I'll second. Discussion. Dave? Uh, pretty much the same thing, except that it's not a, a not-for-profit, it's a, a business, and they go through the same process. We look at their records, uh, we take a pre-pandemic year, compare it to the two pandemic years, come up with uh, lost revenue after we take out uh, other fees or uh, other benefits they might have uh, got uh, during the pandemic. The um, 191 is uh, what they requested and that's what they demonstrated that they lost and the um, task force suggested uh, 90,000. Questions? Comments? No? Marie? But couldn't people go to the drive-in during COVID in the vehicle? I'm just curious. Eventually. Yeah, <laughs> eventually they were allowed they to, but the down. movies that they were showing were old movies and this concession was shut down okay. and you had to get uh, yeah, pay, 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 pay pay yeah. so people could buy their tickets without without money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nobody wanted to touch so anything. They, yeah, they did their best. Everybody, yeah, yeah. Well, let's stop. So Any other comments? Okay, those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes. And last but not least, open for discussion for um, an in vogue salon and spa. Yeah, pretty much the same. Wait, wait I got to get a motion. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I'll make a motion. Second. Uh, I'll second it. Okay. David? So again, this was um, based on lost revenue while they were shut down and then uh, specifically cost increases. So they, they had planned to put in this new uh, ventilation system um, before ventilation systems became the thing to do, right, after COVID, clean out uh, airborne pathogens. They had planned on this uh, as a way to protect their clients um, from a lot of the chemicals that are used in mm -hmm. a place like this. Then COVID hit, and so they stopped the project, and they came back after and said, okay, 
the cost of this increased, uh, and that's a measurement that we've used for other businesses. And also, you know, here's our uh, lost revenue calculations. And um, they asked for uh, over 30000 and the task force suggested that the um, 15.5 is specifically focused on putting in this new air filtration system, and that's how they came up with that number. Comments? Questions? I'm uh, just curious where it is. Where's the location? It's on Red Street in this wheel. Any other? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And it passes. Okay. Erpa. Next, let's get some reporting on our departments here. Okay, Dave, you want to give us some promotion and tourism or Dan? Dan. Okay. <clears throat> um, we ordered 100,000 copies of the visitor guide. They'll be here in two weeks with half of that being distributed around New York State at uh, um, Turnpike locations and half coming to us to distribute you know, locally. Hopefully, We're hoping to have it by the Tourism Conference, which is, starts April 18th, 19th, and 20th of this month. Um, as we move into that, we're going to look forward to a nice Tuesday night of having the fort open, the Safe Haven Museum and Maritime Museum with a bus being uh, routed for about two or three hours. County will be sponsoring that in a lunch for uh, during that week, um, as well as a bus to Mexico for the Underground Railroad uh, shops and sites that are there. Um, hopefully, by the next not next week's legislation meeting, but the following, we will have eleven new photos, seven downstairs and four upstairs to brighten up our hallways. As you know, building grounds and painting uh, the third floor uh, hallway. We have seven going there and four up here. We really looked into showcasing the entire different areas in the entire county, as well as the Four Seasons. Um, so hopefully by, like I said, next legislative meeting, they will be up. Um, tourism website, I know, Marie, last time you had asked about that, uh, we spend $1,500 a year. Everything else is done on site for, like, uh, maintenance for our old website now. It was built in 2010, which also was when it was built in 2010, was not uh, made for any cellular devices. That's what everybody uses. Though. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we're moving into where we're moving into is to when that was built in 2010. And I just suggest, and this is just a suggestion, there are so many great views and visions and the cliffs and all kinds of things, sailboat races, less dead things. Well, I can tell you that, in fact, due to our 11 photos that we chose downstairs, I did mention let's not have any dead ducks. <laughs> well, I just find it like you know, you could see somebody shooting if you want, but I, I did just pass don't think a pile of dead things. Uh, yeah, well, I, I passed that along to the tourism team for this up, uh, website that we're, uh, that we're doing. Now, is there any way we can see what photos are, I know we don't have the total say in it, but I'd love to see what photos are going to be used. Sure, I can send those over to you. You mean in the hall or in the, no, the website? In the website. So once we get into uh, the development stage and we start lay, laying out the various sections and pages, um, certainly welcome I to... I can even come to your office and hang out with yeah. you guys and look at it. It's super <laughs> fun. So, sure. Okay. The tourism staff meets every uh, Friday morning at 10 o'clock, uh, usually for an hour to two hours. Goes over everything that we just did, everything we're going to do next week. <clears throat> and... Um, the, the website as it develops, uh, most things would be, you know, one of the topics during that staff meeting. Mondays and Fridays are really hard for me. Well, there's if as this production stage goes on, before or after this meeting or any time, if you'd like to come down to my office, I'm more than willing to be up there where we are. What page Do you have there? some photos? She was elected. Photos. Oh, oh, we have photos. with a photo. Tons of <laughs> files. <laughs> that, the uh, they're so bad right now. Yeah. Yeah. It makes you want to kill yourself and not come here. Yeah, so, <laughs> change that. Sure. So we've just signed the contract to start moving this project forward. So we're really not at the point where we selected photos. You know, once we lay a page out, um, <clears throat> you kind of work with the content that you plan to be on that page, and then try to match photos to 
uh, what that content looks like. So there are there. three there. amateur there. photographers in this area. I'm just going to say there's some fantastic one, and I know they sign off. One just got asked to use some of the items from the Audubon Society, mm -hmm. and and one is pulling a fish with an eagle, and it's coming up to meet the other eagle. It is breathtaking. And it's a fish head. no, it's not a fish head. It's the whole fish. Not yet. No, it's it's not airborne. Yeah, yeah. It's airborne. Still alive. It's still alive. Still alive. But it's a remarkable <laughs> photograph. And she's been called in. I mean, mm -hmm. Audubon. I think that's a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. um, Kelly Lukacek, um, Susan, all of them. And there's also a, a gentleman, Clark, that does unbelievable lighthouse yeah. photos. Oh my God, the one with the gigantic wave. Yes. I mean, there are some spectacular images that I think they would be honored and would sign off local people mm -hmm. that, that would give their photographs. I'm sure they would. We can get our photos now, just out of curiosity. We've them ourselves. Probably. No, um, <laughs> we try to take the photos for uh, the hallway and the website from like uh, guides and stuff like that, and local too, uh, photographers, but mainly if a... If we do a contract with a, a fishing guide to come up here and fish, and they basically do a, an article in a, a hunting or fishing guide, it's kind of a trade-off. Like, hey, we'll get you with a guide if you give us all of your video and photos and, and so on and so forth, just because you're professional. Mm -hmm. But, like, the photos also, too, is getting a photographer that has the right resolution and, you know. Oh, be, these guys do. Yeah, yeah sure. We have agreements with probably a dozen or more uh, photographers, both locally and regionally. Right. Well, it wouldn't be hard to have a call out to local photographers if you have a picture that you'd like to be included. I mean, yeah, it would yeah, be kind of a nice thing oh for God, the community so to have, ones. you know, some kind of a contest even to, you know, send in your photos and because we, you know, we want to be able to get the best of the best mm -hmm. here and some people will be able to catch something that a planned photographer may not be able to. We, so, did, that, we did that one there. Uh, when I was working down there, we had a county kind of like contest in order to... And, and the entries became the property of the county. People knew right. that. And okay. then we, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, prizes yeah. would have, then we had a whole cache of photos that choose. Oh, that sounds a, like we, a great we idea. We did it annually up until COVID, and then oh, just okay. had to be started again. Okay, good. Yeah, I think that would be great. I love competitions in the county kind of thing, so everybody gets a little bit involved. Yeah, we usually pick like 10 categories and say, so you can submit in these. Yeah, specific categories. And then your photo will be included in the guide and it will be published. So that's right. kind of cool. So if we could fight, move ahead with that type of thing. How old? Yes? Yes. Um, one thing I don't know if anybody realizes is the tourism convention is going to be in Oswego, as he was saying this year. But last year it was in Manhattan. I mean, it goes all over the state. So this gives us the opportunity. Um, Marie, you want to join here? I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, so it gives us, Oswego, an opportunity to to highlight who and what we are. It's very exciting. It really is. We have so many things to offer, and they've really gotten a lot of tours that are going to be going around. So it's April 15. It's the 18th, 19th, and 20th. 18th, 19th, and 20th, right up here at the convention. So is this anybody can go to, or? Um, if anybody would like to attend, if you just let us know, we'll make sure that we put you on the list. Yeah. There is like, if you're going to come here as a um, tourism staff member from Keogh County or Westchester County or whatever, it's a fee to pay to go to like most conferences, right? Um, but if anybody wants to come for a specific, for example, on um, Wednesday afternoon, uh, Phil will introduce uh, Gene from NOAA and they're going to talk about the marine sanctuary and things like that. So there's various topics. There's, workshops to help people better understand how to do social media things. So a lot of it's really focused on the people who are delivering kind of tourism promotion services throughout the state, but it's also a lot of uh, local information as well. Friday afternoon, uh, we'll talk about sustainability and um, somebody from uh, Novellus, somebody from uh, Constellation, and somebody from Brookfield, they'll all talk about um, so Novellus will talk about recycling and everything they do, and then um, Brookfield will talk about their renewables uh, that they own a lot, uh, mostly hydro, but a lot of solar as well. Um, and then uh, Constellation talk about their contribution to the energy market 
and a little bit about their new hydrogen project that's pretty exciting. So and is there going to be an agenda online or anything? There is one now, yeah. Oh, good. So, so the, the agenda is up so people can see exactly yeah. when and what is being discussed. So if they want to go, it'd yeah. be great for some of us that are from Oswego and are knowledgeable of everything that we have to be able to go to these places. And if you hear people talking, that you can add your own information as to why Oswego is great. Just a thought. Um, Phil and I are divers. Are there any dive guides that are going to be available or come into the area to actually do guided dives of any of these wrecks? Well, that's what we hope for. We can get the, the sanctuary designation and then uh, that is a catalyst <coughs> hopefully for uh, some business, small business development. Uh, people take advantage of that, yeah. Are there any guides yeah. up on the St. Lawrence? Oh, yeah. And it's an opportunity for them to uh, expand down here. Uh, there are uh, dive shops in Syracuse that run charters up in the St. Lawrence. Uh, once NOAA buoys things around here, that gives them an opportunity to run a little closer to us. Yeah, I always want to do the beluga. They're in there occasionally. But I mean, it might be worth having a conversation with a good dive guide group. Um, so the uh, people in the diving community, both uh, you know, recreational divers and, and people who are in the business, um, have been pretty attentive and <clears throat> active in the whole process over the last couple of years. So they're tied in uh, with the local planning group. Uh, I just don't know who you'd call right now to say if people, a group wanted to come in and dive some of these racks. Yeah. You right, certainly would need right a, now. A they dive. generally call dive shops that are in Syracuse or the ones on the St. Lawrence. But and the Syracuse shops will do a dive if they have a boat here. Yeah. Or, <coughs> you. Once we get that, uh, that might be big. Though. I think. I, you know, I, I think. The, I think the. Um, what inhibit us now is they're not the, the the ones that are out here in our area and they aren't buoyed. Uh, the ones off of Wayne County, Cuba, they're not buoyed. I think once you have mooring buoys that are uh, permanent and professionally placed by NOAA, right. uh, that's an incentive. Because then, right now, people don't want to spend the time or money to come down here, go out on the lake, and spend three or four hours trying to find something before they can dive. They Are coordinates cool right provided? The, even with coordinates, sometimes you got to move on for a while before you find it. Right. Every dive I've ever been on, though, has never been a buoy dive. Yeah. Anywhere. Okay. Okay, anything else? I can doing? send that uh, tourism um, agenda website over to Matt. Matt can send out to legislation. Oh, yes. That would be great. Okay. Thank you. Anything else for tourism? Good. That's a question. Yes. Um, so um, I'm assuming you both attend the trans uh, the um, Tourism Advisory Committee meetings, or mm -hmm. does anybody else on the committee? I do. Great, that's good because we don't really get a, a report from from on that. Maybe they're once. very seldom. We'd only have them like four times a year, maybe if even. Uh, maybe like seven. Is it that many? Yeah, we don't. But okay. by the time that uh, the members get appointed uh, in the beginning of the year, you know, we get people. We have to. There's certain categories that we have to fill. Uh, Right. On that. So by the time we get a list, the chairman approves it. We have the first meeting, it's usually March. And then... Um, I'm just kind of looking for... I mean, I remember when I used to attend them, we there would be certain events that were interesting enough to kind of bring back and present. Sometimes they'd have flyers for things, things we wouldn't know about otherwise that are true, now, true, across, true. across the county. Okay. And uh, I just wanted to uh, mention a thing I, I, I saw. Somebody brought to my attention an interesting... They had visited... Lancaster County, PA, and they put together this thing that I just thought was really neat. It, it's a uh, so they do the hidden gems of uh, Lancaster County, and they picked um, I, I, the way I understand it. I didn't actually find it and look at it, but it was something we could consider. Um, it kind of combines a scenic location uh, with a vendor nearby of some sort, uh, and people actually pay to get. Um, a discount at each of the vendors if they, if they, you know, so, and get the list of the hidden gems, and they rotate the things. So, for instance, you know, maybe you'd pick out, uh, you know, seeing the uh, 
going out to, to the Maritime Museum and then being able to visit, um, you know, a brew pub or a restaurant nearby and get a discount of 10% or 20% or something like that. It was just, it was, a, it seemed like a really neat idea, you know, if you could uh, piggyback something to do with Salmon River Reservoir or the falls and then a nearby, you know, place of interest nearby. It's kind of a thing. Just, it was kind of a quirky thing, but apparently they raised a whole bunch of money from it and it was good for the local vendors. Right. Um, so they charged, I think, like uh, ten or fifteen bucks um, to get the to get the flyer and the and the information, and then if you you know if you went, you you got the discount. Oh, so it's kind of like you know how how they do the things with the golf courses. You pay one fee, you get a whole book of golf courses, right. only, uh, and you get a discount at each of the golf courses. So only this was with different kinds of vendors. Mm -hmm. We haven't done the vendor connection, but we do something similar uh, called Tourism Tuesday, and, and um, we have usually a video, and it's we go to a place that we consider a gem, right, and then develop a little video about this right. is what's here and how you can get what you can do while you're there or whatever. Um, but uh, connecting that to a vendor, uh, I just it was an interesting well. idea. I thought yeah. I'd bring it to your attention. Well, they're doing something. I'm trying to remember the name of it. I saw the flyer down as I came in, too, about going to different... You earn a patch if you go to different places in Oswego County as a tourism thing. Um, they brought it up. There was a uh, right down. So I can't think of the name of it. And it's you go to the canal, and you go here, there, and you somehow you get a stamp, more or less. And if you go to all of them, you earn your patch. Um, up in the Adirondacks, there's um, there's a couple of those where you can earn a patch for climbing a certain number. And then up uh, near, uh, I can't remember if it's near Tupper or um, seven and six, I think. It's yeah. well, there's one. Uh, there's there's a couple of them, but you know, if you do the three of them in the winter, you get the winter patch. You do three of them in the summer, you get. And, uh, Everybody likes chatting. But it's just, yeah, I know, do, like, good ways to promote um, one year. Do you have to do them all in one year? I'm only good for like one year. <laughs> one year. Well, well one and done. Yeah. A friend of mine talked me into doing a couple of them, and then we were there one more night. I just said, well, now we got to do the last one, but there was three feet of snow, so we did it with snowshoes. It was, uh, God bless you. Um, Dave, planning and committee, you want a community development report? Um, so. Yeah, that was, uh, we're hoping to be able to talk a little bit about uh, this transition in uh, our transportation uh, team. And other than that, we're, we're continuing with uh, a couple of CDBG grants and we'll be applying uh, for some more funding, hopefully fill out the Phoenix uh, wastewater treatment project. Uh, the first one's due. Uh, in, in May, uh, letter in, letter of intent in this month. So uh, we've got a gap of a uh, little between one and two million dollars to, to get that thing done, and hopefully we'll be able to pull that in this year. You know, that is, I'm, I can't wait for that one to be. We so long every year we get a little bit closer and a little bit closer, and I think finally we're. Yeah. And then also, you know, with the whole uh, Myron, uh, Micron. Um, kind of organized planning. Uh, we um, partnered with the mayors and the supervisors uh, to have a meeting uh, at Tailwater last week, week before, week before. Yeah. And um, we tried to enforce um, something that there was a consultant there that night uh, did a really good job of, of letting people know what to anticipate and what they need to do. Uh, to plan for that, and they use the, fra the phrase plan or be planned. So if you want to have something to say about what's going to happen in your community as a result of this uh, investment that's likely to happen nearby, you need to get people together and um, start developing your own comprehensive plan and zoning if you don't have it, if zoning if you want it, or someone's going to come and do whatever they feel like doing because you don't have a plan. Um, so. Uh, the other thing we talked about is uh, the infrastructure development in order for Scruple, for example, to be able to benefit from uh, the potential for uh, development there, both commercial and, and residential. You know, they have almost no infrastructure, so um, they're really geared up and, and um, 
they're they're going with pull pull steam ahead on um, a plan to perhaps put in their own new wastewater treatment uh, system because they know that uh, with this kind of growth, the Phoenix plant would soon be at capacity even once we get this new project done, we'll use that capacity up in a hurry. Yeah. So Scruple is looking at their own plant and they, they know they need to bring water out to those places where uh, it would be desirable residential developments. Mm -hmm. um, and we talked uh, a lot about that. We also uh, had a meeting with um, two of the subcommittees from the steering group that the college uh, is helping to uh, manage. Austin uh, is the uh, chair, if you will, of the economic development uh, working group and I'm the uh, chair of the infrastructure working group. So we pulled the two groups together to have an initial meeting and talk about how should we proceed, what uh, gather some information uh, from all those uh, key players in, in that sector and um, try to get uh, some commitment at that point for people to participate in an ongoing planning process. Uh, so uh, a lot of work has, has been done uh, recently to try to figure out how we uh, can close the gaps because there's plenty. Uh, and some of them are, are just planning. You know, it's not a lot of money. Uh, it can be uh, a lot of money depending on, on uh, how much you want. You can have a very simple comprehensive plan or you can have a really great one. And then from that great one, you can develop really good, solid, enforceable land use regulations. Um, and that's what we're trying to uh, encourage a lot of people to do. Um, I told all of them if you need me to come to a town board meeting and talk about these things, I'm happy to. And there's a lot of places where the Z word isn't very popular and I said, look, I'll take the heat for the supervisor or the planning board chair. If you want me to come and talk about zoning and you guys kind of act like you don't really care, but I know you don't want to sit say the words, I'll say the words, and, and let people decide after that. So um, we're hoping. And I was also, uh, and I talked to you a little bit about this. Um, I was thinking about perhaps some kind of incentive from the county to say, look, we know uh, it's expensive. We know you weren't planning on this, um, but Here's a little bit of seed money. If you are interested in developing a comprehensive plan, you got to hire somebody to come in and help you do that. Here's five or ten thousand uh, dollars. The county supports your efforts and will help you get started by, you know, <coughs> seeding the cost of that a little bit. Um, haven't really discussed it with anybody besides Phil uh, up until this moment, but uh, I think it could go a long ways in in a town or village budget to have a little bit of help from the county. Comments? Well, it, also, no, it's fine. it would, it would, show, would, it would show our interest mm -hmm. in the whole concept of, mm -hmm. you know, the infrastructure study we're doing as well. Just opens doors, creates, you know, bridges between communities and uh, the county. Right. We can't preach working together if we don't have skin meeting ourselves. Yeah. All right. What do you think the cost of one of these plants would be, Dave, off the top of your head, perhaps? Um, if, if, it really depends. If you have one and it's you know four years old, five years old, ten years old, um, and you don't really have like a lot of land use regulation, but you want to develop, you know, it depends on the, that scope. Uh, if you ha if you don't have anything, um, and you're <clears throat> what's I don't what's I'll just say New Haven, right? Uh, five square miles, uh, not a lot of industry, um, you probably can do a plan for forty to $50,000. Um, it's a long process. You've got to have community meetings and, and voting. Um, it's, not, it's not an easy thing for like a, a village or a town to take on because they just don't have the capacity uh, to do that for the most part, uh, financially and otherwise. So, um, county level where you're looking at 
everything and everybody. Um, probably more like maybe. Um, Jared, you have your hand up? No, I just wanted to, you know, add to what Dave was saying. The town of Mexico and the village of Mexico. Right now, ours was written in 2003. We're updating ours, and uh, we've reached a point, thanks to assistance from Dave's office, to where we can't go any further. So we've uh, enlisted support from I think Empire State Development with Jeannie Gleister, and it's going to cost us seventy thousand dollars to get to the point where we need to have a, a fully completed, uh, workable, comprehensive plan. And we're looking at probably a year's time. So, so that has a little bigger ticket to it because you've got the village and the town together developing a plan. So um, a little more to that than, than one by themselves. But if they had done them individually, it could have easily been 50 or 60 each. There would be a lot of duplicity in that. Right. And I want to, you know, we want to thank the village and uh, the Plaska and the town of Ritson too, because they've been, you know, advising us on their plan, which is being currently updated. And um, they've got a fantastic comprehensive plan. I just wanted to bring up, there's usually not an opportunity um, for all communities to update their comprehensive plans at the same time. So this is sort of a unique uh, position. Would there be any economy of scale or savings if, if, multiple communities wanted to utilize the same planner or the same service versus if someone would be costing 50000 if they're each doing their own thing individually in their own silo, <coughs> maybe it costs them 30000 each if like 10 of them band together and do it. Dave and I talked about that as well. As, uh, is there a way for that? They could, that could be done as a shared service. Yeah. Uh, but that also begs, you know, advances to the next question. Um, with 22 towns all doing conferences yeah. at the same time, mm -hmm. are we really looking at, and, and do they count as a comprehensive plan, a regional comprehensive plan? Because I could see the towns on the north shore of Nile Lake having a lot in common. And yeah. sh should they do a regional comprehensive Absolute. plan? Yeah. Uh, and and uh, well, there would be economy there, but there would also be continuity uh, among the like communities within the county. Well, a model could be um, like the Tug Hill divides their municipalities into um, NORCOG, right? Yeah, the Council of Governments, right? Salmon, Salmon River, COG, I think. There's right. a couple different ones, yeah. yeah. And they've been extremely helpful on those kinds of things, doing the surveys and such in the past. Yeah. I just wanted to bring up one other thing is that towns have borders. They, they you know, they, they end at a certain point, but roads don't, utilities don't, you know, a lot of other things don't. So to me, it would be more cohesive and work better if communities work together and not just say, well, we want to be a community that has lots of industrial development and it's going to be right up against the border of the town that doesn't, you know what I mean? It would just, it would be better coordinated and cohesive if they did plans together and maybe, you know, they do have their own individual plans, but they're done in partnership so that we don't have these weird situations where, one town wants something that's completely different than what another town wants and it creates sort of chaos at the borders. Yeah. Yeah. And and really so the comprehensive plan positions you to develop land use regulation. And just because you have a plan with two or three towns who all agree to like these concepts under the comprehensive plan, this is what we all think is good. Um, this is what the community members have said they'd like to see. That doesn't mean that they still can't each individually have their own land use code. They don't have to all agree. Well, you want a landfill? You don't want a landfill. You know, you you don't want uh, automobile repair shops, and you do. You know, uh, it can still be individual, even though your plan that supports all those combines the three of you. Uh, to play nice, basically. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a great, uh, it's a huge bite to chew, but that, I think that's a great idea for the community for us to get together once again as a county. Mm -hmm. And we show them that we support them. Because a lot of times they're like, well, we're, we're left here doing our own thing. What's the county doing? And there we are. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Well, I think, you know, unless you want to put. Three hundred thousand on the table to support that. I'm I'm done. <laughs> I don't know if Bill's ready to uh, uh, say anything to us about three hundred thousand. Just kind of throw it out there to do, but it's definitely something to throw us to Yeah, I was just going to say that Hannibal, we just went through this and we have hired someone to do our comprehensive plan, 
And there was a grant out there that actually, uh, we found a grant through the woman that does the comprehensive planning. And I don't know the name of it, but I can get it to you. So that Hannibal's only paying, I think, 10% of what's left. Oh, that's nice. Maybe, maybe 70000 That would be Jean Gleiser. It was Jean yeah. Gleiser. I was there for the interview. I was very also. impressed with okay. her. But there's very few options out there, so it's not real feasible for everyone to do it at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it takes her about a year. And she writes the grants also. And I said, well, yeah. if you can, if you're patterning it after a village or a township you've already done, why is it so costly? Because you could basically copy the <laughs> yeah, your template. The yeah, and well, she yeah. didn't see it that way. <laughs> yeah, the the public participation part uh, it is very important. Like if you do a plan and, and you didn't involve the community at all, the state would reject it. And until the state approves your plan, you can't use that plan to develop your land use regulations. Does the mm -hmm. county have any say into a town's plan? No. No. So it is definitely theirs. It's not like they do it and then they give it to us to, to no. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a state. You know, yeah. The only other thing I was going to add is I didn't find out until doing this that the zoning, like you're talking about, comes after the plan. It's not really a part of the plan. So yeah. there's, there's a whole second step. Like, I would just to throw this out there for perspective. 300000 sounds like a lot of money, right? But this is an important venture that we have to take, whether it costs us 300000 or we can save a few dollars here and there. We'll spend $500,000 on an elevator replacement. Yeah. I'm not saying that there's yeah. anything wrong with that, but what I'm saying is that this is a, we're at an important juncture right now in our county's history, right? This growth is coming. Uh, I know there's naysayers about there, but Micron's coming. It's coming. Uh, so in order for us to be prepared for that, we've got to be prepared to help the, the towns along. And we can't tell the towns what to do, but we can guide them and we can help them, right? We can help them with our, with our financially and with a bigger plan. Because a lot of towns don't know what the bigger plan is. So if we have a plan that we can say, hey, look, this is what we're suggesting, you know, how do you guys feel about it? And I think we need to be able to be prepared to bring that to the table when we sit down with them. And we need to know how they feel about it before we have any motions here as to how much Correct. we can put into it. We can yeah. talk to them and say we're willing to put this amount in. We've been working on a master plan yeah. though for quite some time. Uh, both Austin and Dave have been working on this and uh, we're going to continue to complete. Well, I think the guidance from the county provides them a parameter to think because when you just say, well, what do you think? What do we should? It's so many things. Right. If you kind of group it in and say, okay, here's what we're working with. I think things go a lot easier, a lot faster. The people know that this is what we're looking at, not just could be just anything. Right. Right. Can ARPA funds be put into? Mm -hmm. I read it. It's sewer and yes. high speed internet. Our internal ARPA fund could be used for this. So why can't we spend like two million on it while we got the money? Supposedly mm -hmm. the state's doing broadband, right? Well, I don't. Since I care about the sewer right now. Over 15 years, has it been that long? You need to look up and tell me. Oh, yeah. You know, the money's there. It's a one time windfall. Yeah, I would assume. The state's been doing this for a long time. I just think it would be money so well spent. Well, we need to find out if yeah, they're interested in what they're willing for us to do and get a proposal to see what is out there. If there is, find a couple million. Well, that's on the table. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's on the table. Mm. Interesting. Food for thought. Yes, it is. Definitely yeah. it's a, something for us. It's a carrot for us to, to go after. Go for soon, though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. Yes. You need to go soon. And I just want to, uh, <laughs> Noelle, Noelle mentioned uh, Jeannie Gleisner, and I just wanted to remind folks that um, Jeannie works for Ascension New York Regional Planning and Development, one of our authorized agencies that, that we support and so that's an example of one of the services that they provide. I know they also worked on the Pulaski um, Richland plan when they did that together and they helped. Uh, I think they've got a project going in the town of Oswego and, and uh, some more planning. So we help to the extent that we can. Uh, we worked with Mexico for about a year and a half we had a contract with the town of Oswego the last time they updated theirs, and that was about a two-year project. So uh, we just don't have the capacity to take on like more than one at a time. And um, because of the time that we can commit to something like that, it's going to take a little longer than it would if they had something more focused on it. 
Well, I think there's other towns that have done it recently. So, I mean, some comprehensive, yeah. some towns have done. They've done their comprehensive plan. So, it's not like we're dealing with 22. You know, I don't know how many have done it, but I do know Scruples done it. Do we get do we get copies of these comprehensive plans that they come to us complaining so that we're we're fully aware of what their plans are, so we can use that to help us develop our plan to help them. Yeah, we have uh, what we believe is the latest version of everybody's plan. Um, the not really documents anyway. Yeah, but well, well, they're not really an approved plan until okay. the state says okay. Correct. So they may change that. So. We really need to see what the state has approved for their plans. Yes. I just wanted to add, uh, Legislator Chesborough, that even though some communities may have done theirs in the last year or two, if they did them before Micron and they don't mention Micron in there, they probably need to look at updating it because that's such a big game changer that yeah. you know whatever you mm -hmm. did may not be relevant now because it didn't address the grill in the room. So another important thing, and, and uh, it's good that Austin brought that up, is um, I have rarely run into a grant application that didn't say does the activity that you're trying to fund show up anywhere in a local or regional planning document so i mean if, when you say no i mean you just lost a bunch of points in, in, in your score right yeah. so even if you can find a vague reference to what you're trying to do in your comprehensive plan or regional economic development plan uh, now, now you're picking up points over we had, as an example, uh, there's one grant source that uh, we've been successful with in, in years past, but last year we thought we had a really good application. There was 58 uh, applications they could only fund 13. You know, we were 15. So um, finding a way to get more points and we apply, right? Mm -hmm. um, and having references and planning documents is uh, one of those ways. So once again, if the county is looking at all of them, there's the references much more easily um, seen and put <clears> into them. <throat> right. Okay. Um, any other comments? Yeah, I just wanted to kind of wrap up. Um, I, I just wanted to thank uh, uh, Dave and, and Phil for helping out. We had our uh, first transportation uh, advisory committee meeting of the year. Things went uh, really well. We had eight or nine uh, reps, uh, both of uh, contractors, users and the, uh, the contracting agencies. So we had DSS, OFA, Centro, OCO, Arise, the cities of Fulton and Oswego, uh, term, uh, Tourism Department and Catholic Charities. Uh, there may even been a couple more. Really great meeting. Wow, there's so much to that. Thank you, Mel, for doing that for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, I kind of, the reason that we pulled the mobility management um, this time is because we just, uh, we might have jumped the gun a little bit. We weren't certain about how many or uh, how much uh, DOT had to actually approved the salary if we bring somebody in. So we want to make sure that we're, you know, dotting the I's, crossing the T's yeah. on that. And so that's why we pulled that today. Yeah. And uh, But I think uh, a really good opportunity, really great group of people, um, good opportunity to try to really do something uh, for the future of public transportation in the county. I'm excited about it. Yes. I think it's on the right track. Okay, if there's no uh, nothing else, let's go right on to Erica. Is it a show and tell time? Oh boy. Probably show and tell. I feel like I wouldn't be able to report without a few of the hands on items. So part of my job responsibilities at the Soil and Water Conservation District uh, is the district technician is environmental education programs as well as programs that assist the uh, agricultural community, and I have a brief report on both of those topics today. The first program I'd like to report on is our Plant-a-Tree program. It's in its 32nd year, and it's open countywide to all students in grades pre-K through 5. The information is sent out, and we work on this program with Cornell Cooperative Extension of Oswego County, so the information went out in March, and we had 14 different schools sign up. We'll be distributing tree seedlings to 5,000 students and educational materials as well. That will take place on April uh, 18th and 19th for the distribution of those. Um, I know some of you in the room here have stories of trees that were received by children or grandchildren in your family that's been planted uh, over the years. 
And uh, after this year's program, we will have distributed 143,000 trees. So hopefully a very good percentage of those are still alive and well. I've got um, one for my son. He's yep. still in the backyard. Mm -hmm. If you ever think of sending a picture on to me, we love to share those kinds of stories of, okay. you know, about when it was planted. And All right. Cool. Uh, that program is supported by the Oswego County Federation of Sportsmen's Clubs as well as Constellation. The second environmental education program is called the Envirothon. That is a competition for high school students, so grades 9 through uh, 12. And the students study aquatics, current environmental issues, forestry, soils, and wildlife. They start studying these topics in uh, usually October of the you know, start of the school year. And then on the first Thursday in May, we have what's called the actual Envirothon event itself. The students who are participating come to the site this year. We're at Camp Hollis. It will be on May 4th. And the students take hands-on exams in these various subject areas. Um, up to five students can be on one team. I'm pleased to report uh, after having four school districts last year, we are up to seven. This year, we're very excited. We're getting back to pre-COVID participation <coughs> levels. Uh, and my hands-on items pertain to some of the questions that the students might encounter when they're at the exam stations. Um, again, the students work in groups of five, and they have 25 multiple choice questions. Uh, so for example, at the forestry station, we will actually have uh, you know, live trees that are marked, but they might have to distinguish the difference between a red pine and a white pine. Uh, at the aquatic station, uh, this is a small scale model of a gabion basket, so something that's used to support uh, and prevent erosion, say, along a stream bank. So we might ask them what the purpose of the gabion basket is. At the soil station, we'll have actually have a pit excavated where they will have to identify information about different soil horizons. Uh, so even though this book was produced in the 70s, the soils are the same. Um, some of you may have one of floating around your office. Uh, but the Oswego County Soil Survey, so it has the entire county mapped uh, with lots of great information about the productivity of the soil, infiltration of the soil, um, maps as well. There is a new online web soil survey, but for the purpose of our Envirothon event, we have the hard copy available. Students don't have to memorize everything in here because there's an awful lot, but they do have to know where to find the information. Uh, at the Wildlife Station, we may have uh, information or a question related to what kind of species or what type of habitat does a walleye prefer. Uh, so we try to ask our exam givers to have as much hands-on information as we can to encourage the students uh, you know, either to spend time outdoors, maybe they want to pursue an environmental career. We've heard great feedback from the program. Uh, we do move it around different sites within the county. So again, this year we're at Camp Hollis. Uh, last year we were at North Shore Sportsman's. Association in Constantia. We've been at Camp Zerby, 4-H Center in Amboy. And the purpose of that is so if a student comes in as a freshman participant, by the time they uh, participate as a senior, they will have them to four different natural resource areas, whether it's a park or a camp uh, within Oswego County. So it kind of gets them around to see different sites. Uh, I will forward an invitation to that event to the committee. So May 4th, Camp Hollis, if you'd like to come out and see the event, if you'd like to help us hand out the awards, we do a lot of, uh, well, we do an award for first place in each of those categories, first place overall, but we give out some fun spirit awards as well. We try to have this be a really fun learning event for the students, and I'll make sure to forward that invitation. Um, from, I've been to yes. that. I just want to add, I've been to that the last three or four years, and I love it because you go... You can go to the different stations and listen to the kids talking because they have to be, well, do you think this? Do you think that? And you can see the whole process of what they're talking about. And you see the difference in the different schools as to who had taught them. You can see it. It's, I totally enjoy it. It's really good to see those kids working together. And they get so excited, obviously, during the award ceremony. And you get a box lunch. Okay, so yes, so and no, a it is, right. and a t-shirt, that's right, you get a t-shirt, max lunch, and um, it's definitely something well worth it to go, spend your time. Well, great, thank you for that feedback, and hopefully we'll have a good showing from the legislative committee to attend that event. Um, on that note, I would like to ask, um, in the past, the um, legislature as a whole has recognized the winner of the Oswego County Environment at your June meeting, mm -hmm. if you would be willing to do so again this year. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Put it in there. Yeah. Got so it. whoever does win the Oswego <laughs> County Marathon moves on to the state level competition, and that will be at Hobart and William Smith Colleges uh, towards the end of May. And uh, you know, knock on wood, we always uh, very <laughs> typically uh, place the Oswego <laughs> County team that's often placed in the top ten. So we would mm -hmm. hope that the winner will again fulfill that. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, from the agricultural side of things, tomorrow is our 6th Annual Ag Agency Awareness Day. Um, when I say our, I mean the Soil and Water District, Cornell Cooperative Extension of Oswego County, the USDA, the um, Farm Service Agency, the Natural Resources Conservation Service, along with Rural Development, who does a lot of the loan programs. Uh, so those five agencies, we will be at the VFW in Mexico tomorrow and each agency will have about 15-20 minutes to explain what our role is in assisting the agricultural community. So yes, there's a, you know, a bunch of ag agencies, but we each have a different purpose to help the, the farmers of our county. We'll also be having a soil health demonstration, which is a really neat uh, demonstration to see as far as the impact of soil compaction what happens with rainwater infiltration versus runoff. Just a really neat hands-on demonstration. We have a free lunch at that as well. And then after each agency does their presentation, we'll have a table set up so folks can come up and speak to us individually about our programs. Uh, and we'll also be talking about the agricultural district versus the agricultural assessment, which even though I've been doing this a really long time, I still learn something new each year. And it can often be a confusing process for folks. And I know this year is a renewal for the Ag District. Yeah. So we hope to help um, guide folks through that process or extension along that side of it. And I can work with the agricultural assessment side of things. Uh, and one other program I'll be working on later this year involves soil sampling uh, for agricultural producers. So we have received some funding from New York State to uh, allocate to farmers who are working with us in our agricultural environmental management program to help them do soil sampling. Uh, if they're a livestock farm or they accept livestock waste, um, we can also assist with manure sample. And you know what better way to help farmers um, than know what nutrients they're putting on with the manure. It might help them with their fertilizer bills if we can uh, allocate up to $200 per farm for soil sampling or manure sampling. Uh, typically, the recommended time is the fall to pull your soil samples. So if we get this rolled out uh, over the summer, then they can be prepared to do their soil sampling in the fall, and then they'll have those recommendations for next spring. Now, that would only be farmers that are presently in different programs, or any farmer could call up and say, gee, I would like to get some soil samples. Yes, and it would be, um, we do the Agricultural Environmental Management Program planning process, so at least if I could work with them initially to gather some farm information, we're uh, trying to keep it to folks we have been working with so far, but certainly would welcome new folks into the program. And, you know, $200 per farm is an earth-shattering amount of money, but if it encourages somebody to start or renew their soil samples, then that's a great way to help them with the productivity of their farm and keeping extra nutrients from being added if they're not necessary. Um, it's just too bad with the meeting that you have tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All of those farm agricultural things meeting up in Mexico, and we have Claudia Tenney going to be here mm -hmm. to speak. It would be wonderful if we could get her to run up there, just speak a little that bit up there. What, yes, we're because going to you've got everybody up there, and I, you know what I'm saying? Those are the people that really need to hear this. We'll be starting at 11 a.m. I believe the listening session is at 10 yeah. a.m. here, but if, absolutely, if yeah. she would like I to stop by. Let her know at least that okay. there is a group up there that is prime market for what and she's talking about. I can give you about. a copy of the agenda. If, if you, you like, would, please not take that. Um, but you don't absolutely. know if it'll happen. I'm sure her schedule is such. Okay. You never know. But at least I don't want her to say, oh, I'd only known. Mm -hmm. So if we at least let her know. How long she, do you think it'll last? We'll be going till about 145. Yeah. I think that's the last. Or excuse me, 230. If people stay for the um, visiting of the booths. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so, but any, you know, really any time during that, if we knew she would like to stop by, we can. Yeah. The yeah. I think if she was notified to let her know mm -hmm. that. You know, it just happened to coincide that I'm sure a lot of them up there would have come to this, but they can't because they're already mm -hmm. up there, and that is the prime audience that yeah, she should absolutely. be speaking to. Okay. And uh, just a 
final note, uh, Joe Sherwati, our district manager, he will be attending a future meeting with our annual report, which is a summary of activities, and then he's also currently working on uh, the Water Chestnut program for the summer and the hiring of interns, and that will okay. be also going. So, um, okay. Anybody have any questions for Erica? What uh, time's the uh, Envirothon? We will be starting with station rotations about 9.30 a.m., and I'll definitely include the schedule for you. And if you'd like to come again for part of the stations or with the awards ceremony, that you'll be able to pick from the schedule what time would be appropriate. Thank you all for your time. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much, Erica. Thank you, sir. And not last but not least, okay. Yeah, awesome. I can come over and give an update on a few. I know I'll, I'll try to be um, sensitive to time. I know we're running um, up to the deadline here. Uh, I wanted to give you an update on four things real quick. Um, so obviously you guys in the room know about the the deal working with High Score and Global right now for the former ads plan. Um, to give some updates, things are progressing along well. They're in the middle of their due diligence. They believe they'll be done mid mid April. Um, they have a board meeting later in April where they'll be making their final decision on that. Um, we've been in direct contact on a weekly basis with them in terms of um, helping them to understand what programs are out there that they could be uh, eligible for, as well as making connections with the uh, DEC and other entities that they need to to be able to fully um, perform the due diligence that they need to do. I mean, they, they set themselves a pretty short window, I think 45 days uh, from March 1 to April 15 to do their due diligence. So they're, um, I've been out there with them. Um, I will tell you they have a team of about a dozen people on site out there, at least when I was there, um, that is helping them to get this done. So they're taking this very seriously. And um, like I said, it's I, I wouldn't say it's a, a done deal by any means, but I think it's, it's looking pretty positive. Um, to, to have a, a good outcome there. Um, from what I understand, it's it's about a $25 million project around that range uh, between 20 and 25. Um, the reason I say that is because one of the things they're looking at right now is uh, for the last, the, the plant's been closed down since about April of 2020. So we're about three years now into that thing being closed and not being properly winterized or taken care of or maintained in any way at all, really. Um, you know, I mean, you guys had to go in there and put out a fire in a silo because they weren't doing anything. Mm -hmm. So there is, they're, they're kind of looking at sort of like a worst case and a best case scenario in terms of damage. Um, you know, there's water in the facility from reverse pipes. There's um, freezing damage, all sorts of other stuff. And just like I said, from just a lack of maintenance. So they're, they're putting together some, some sort of best case and worst case scenarios on that. So there's like a range in terms of what the cost of the project is. But um, they are a good company. They're a Fortune 300 company. They have the wherewithal to do this, unlike Addis. And, um, you know, they have people that they're looking to bring in who are associated with, if they do this, that were associated with when Sunoco was there, and they'll run a good tight ship and know what they're doing. So, so it's not a done deal yet. Um, and obviously, they, they still need to make that final decision. But from everything, my indication so far, it's looking positive. Um, one thing you mentioned, uh, things to do with DEC. Um, Erica, you can even speak to how much Joe does in helping people with DEC at Soil and yeah. Water, if they contact Joe, I know we'd be able mm -hmm. to help them. Okay, no, it's good. And you know, I mean, a lot of it is they're looking to operate a existing facility within an existing footprint. Um, however, because they do store grains on site and they have, you know, rail and they do all these other things, it does create some sort of unique um, things that DEC would need to be involved in on that. So, so uh, you know, and, and they do have other operations in New York State, but they are a uh, Massachusetts headquartered company, so the rules are a little bit different than here in terms of they're just trying to wrap their head around, you know, how they need to do things differently versus how they would do it in some other places. Um, and you see the Attorney General, I think, said something about she wanted to stop ethanol being on rail, and well, I don't know if there have been any, is that really a concern that that might go ahead, or? I think it's so soon into it, they're not, you know, it's not really something that, they looked at, um, obviously that would impact that plant because every ethanol that's made there goes out by rail. Exactly. And almost, I wouldn't say all the corn, but a majority of the corn comes in by rail. There is, um, and that's another you know thing about this project is that it does help support. When, when they were going and they were accepting local corn, there was a lot of corn coming in from Sugo County as well as uh, adjacent counties, and, and so that's negatively impacted them by that plant shutting down. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that the model is right now that it would be going out by rail. Um, 
I don't know if they would completely shut something down like that because, to my knowledge, most ethanol ship by by rail, and you'd be really screwing up the uh, the logistics system, uh, state not just statewide but nationwide, if you're doing something like that. So. It just piqued my interest when I saw her say that. <laughs> I couldn't say for sure if they would do it or not, but I mean, it may be a way to try to get the the industry as a whole to get their act together by making a threat like that. But yeah. I, I don't know. Okay. But so that's that project. Um, you know, hopefully we'll have a a uh, before you know the next meeting, um, next EDP meeting, we'll have a decision one way or another on this. Um, Dave already kind of talked about the Sugo County Micron Steering Committee and the work groups. Uh, we did meet, I believe it was the week before last, it was the 21st, I believe it was, mm -hmm. uh, as a joint committee of both infrastructure and economic development, which uh, is really necessary because uh, an economic development work group cannot be doing things in isolation, not knowing what how the infrastructure group is working. And and really, I've, I've, um, I'm... I'm my task is to work with the other groups too to make sure that we're kind of all working in unison. That work, the workforce group isn't doing things that are going to, you know, clash or or not, you know, work together with with the other groups like the economic development and other things. So, so we're trying to do this in a coordinated fashion. Um, our two groups are going to meet back together in May. Um, we're, we're having a separate meeting in April to kind of do some stuff, getting back together in May to make sure that these things are kind of growing together, not growing apart in terms of the. The work that we're doing, uh, and then I believe that they the plan is to have a a um, an action plan or a, um, a something that's going to be put forward in in August at the latest from from the entire steering committee because there's there's like eight or nine different work groups uh, and some of those might get consolidated just by the fact that they may not have enough people. <laughs> to 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 have a full group, you know, on some of these things, so they might end up becoming more like six work groups or something like that. But but it's it's moving forward, and um, you know, I think Dave Dave and our group was the first group to meet as work groups, um, and we've actually helped to create sort of a template for some of these other groups to meet, and I think we're we're moving forward well on that. Um, Mayor Michaels uh, is running the transportation group, and she did invite me to participate in that. We're meeting. Great. Next Wednesday, I believe. Excellent. Um, now, I over I heard someone say to me that Micron though has not had a presence in any of these meetings. Not true. No, yeah, that's our, not true. Our very first meeting, they had a representative okay. um, zoomed in, uh, okay. and we are planning to work the dates out for our next meeting, where they're supposed to have somebody, maybe several people actually here and. Not just in our meeting, but in some other group meetings okay. with appropriate uh, folks. Okay. Uh, I just didn't want us stuff. meeting no. away from what they are. I mean, I wanted to make sure they no. knew what we were doing. No, and and, and we we've already had they've they've been to our steering committee. I believe it was either a January or February one, mm -hmm. and uh, they made a presentation to our steering committee. Um, it was someone. I think it was work work, more aligned with their workforce mm -hmm. group, but I mean that's going to be critical. Is, oh. is, is doing that. Yeah. And, and they've already talked about doing, um, and it's not been scheduled yet, but having a in-person meeting coming to Oswego County, potentially coming to Fulton, and, and um, you know, meeting with various groups. Um, and that that's something that's also been um, something that Barclays office is also coordinate. So, in, in terms of getting some of the town, and I mean, it's been a challenge with them. I mean, they are um, they have a lot going on right now, and uh, you know they're trying to do all this from from Boise, Idaho, yeah. uh, where where they're headquartered. And uh, but we've 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 been in touch, and um, we're we're just trying to get the logistics of a, of a date. They they talked about potentially April, if not April, but May. Um, I heard um, the mayor of Syracuse. Uh, no, it wasn't even the mayor. Who was it? Ryan. It's county not, executive. Yeah, yes. county executive. Um, that he was out in California. Mm -hmm. looking for manufacturers that would be filling their industrial park that they just bought the land of across from Micron. Mm -hmm. Are we out looking for manufacturers to be there? We're not going to California, but we are, <laughs> we are looking for um, supply chain industries. Okay. And, um, you know, I think some of that is is uh, we're, we're doing this sort of in a regional and statewide effort. Um, we're working with Empire State Development. We're working with our um, regional partners like Center State. Um, and we've also done our own research in terms of, of who are the companies that Micron does business with. It's not, it's not a surprise. It's not a secret. Yeah. Um, okay. 
I, mean, I haven't been out to California yet no to, uh, to do that. Okay. So maybe yeah. maybe at some point in the yeah. future. <laughs> so. so one of the limiting factors mm -hmm. in that uh, area is that there's been this just recent push to bring chip manufacturing back to America. So there's several plants being built and there's not like a history of, well, every time one of these things gets built, here's the companies that cluster around it, right? That, that history hasn't developed yet. So we're trying to figure out what, what's happening around these other plants as, as they're coming online and uh, slowly people are saying, okay, I'm going to locate here, I'm going to locate here. Uh, so it's like you're always trying to catch up with what's going on as opposed to being able to say, well, this plant got built 20 years ago and here's what happened. This one got built 10 years ago, here's what happened. You know, they're all like built within the last five years if they're built, right? Gotcha. And you're so, need, you need to balance both what you can currently support with the infrastructure and sites that you have versus what you would be able to support with the sites if you could get them and the utilities and infrastructure if you could get them. So you're kind of having to play both a short game and a long game here of saying these are what we can get now based on what we have. And this is what we can get in say three to five years if we have this. Gotcha. So you kind of have to um, have something to sell them, you know, and not kind of say, hey, we want to get you in here and not be able to support them at all. So gotcha. you kind of have to um, get your ducks in a row. And in that line, we had a meeting with National Grid folks last week to talk about everything that we need to be able to grow that uh, industrial park uh, on 481. And um, they have their team doing an analysis of what's there and what do they need to do to get more there, uh, gas and electric. So um, we know there's deficiencies and we're already working with the utility to figure out what it will take and how long it will take. So your plan or be planned. Can we change the name of the road? Bankrupt road. Oh. <laughs> 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 How about enterprise drive? Anything but that. Yeah. Uh, if we ever get the industrial park up to bankrupt road, we can talk about that. Right now it only goes about halfway. This is such a bad thing. I, I didn't come up with that one. <laughs> yeah. um, no, Dean, actually, you, you kind of, you just, you, that was the next thing I was going to talk about was the, the, the National Grid. You know, we've had other meetings in terms of infrastructure and, and site development stuff, but National Grid is one of the big ones because that's one of the limiting issues is we always talk about public infrastructure, water and sewer, um, but one of the other big deficiencies that we have in, in rural areas and areas that are just outside of, you know, where, where is, is electric and gas infrastructure. More, more electric. Um, a lot of it's older, older substations. They don't have a lot of capacity. Um, you know, their power quality issues, and so we're we're looking to we're we're working with National Grid right now, looking to um, the the what we're proposing is to put a brand new substation um, at land at the industrial park, which would serve both the existing and new expanded industrial park, but also have additional capacity to support for future development and some other residential development that's going to kind of blossom around that area because um, a lot of these things were not overbuilt. They were kind of built to what the capacity was and now we're in a world where we, we may have, you know, I mean, I'm not going to go overboard here, but you could see in the town of Scruple, Phoenix, Hastings area, 10 to 20,000 more people in the next 20 years. And how does that, you know, how do you, you know, how do you, how do you address that? You know, you can't just do that. You can't just put it in there without looking at your infrastructure and your zoning and everything else. So it's getting back to the things we talked about earlier. But like I said, I, I don't want to be quoted on that. I don't know if it's going to be that much, but I mean, I think that with the distance that you are from where that is going to be and with the amount of opportunity and land that's there, you could easily see that. But we have to capitalize on this in the near future. Justin, may I ask yeah. you a question? Yeah, I need to add a um, this solar kind of takeover of such great land that's occurring, and so many, so many people are upset. My concern is, one, are we even going to be able to have enough corn to grow? I mean, this is hijacking land for like 50 years. People living near it hate it. Um, I, I get calls constantly, the Minetto thing, the Swigo Town, it is awful. I think in the, the more sophisticated areas like Saratoga and gosh in New York. I've 
found that they're putting moratoriums in. Mm -hmm. But they built a solar farm in Conquest, the size of Baldwinsville. That was previously all prime farmland. Mm -hmm. And it just concerns me deeply. And I, I'm, I'm concerned that I don't know if on a county level there can be a permit process because they really did grandstanding at the last meeting of Swigo Town. Like, basically, we're going to take you to court if you don't agree to this. And I really had a hard time with that. Well, I can't say, I mean, there's, <clears throat> the state is really pushing for these, which is I part understand. of the issue. Uh, what I can say just from one other community that we are working with right now, Town of Albany did put in a six-month moratorium to get a better handle on where they would like these kinds of projects. I mean, and if a town wanted to do that, they can do that. I mean, that's something that a town can push. I think that that, I mean, land use and things, that comes from the local level. To me, I mean, that's got to be a, when you say Saratoga and Goshen put in moratoriums, it wasn't Saratoga County. I think it was, you know, the local communities of those places. Right. I mean, I just think we need some help on yeah. language. And a lot of them are unsophisticated, have no idea what way to go. They hear lawsuit, they get nervous. I, I, I guess I'd just say again, I would look into what the town of Albany did. I think Graham Sider is their attorney and developed that. And just, I mean, there's public information out there. Look at what they put together. That's so important. And, and um, copy and paste. Well, I mean, and, I mean, it's something that would have to be pushed and passed by the town, obviously, but it would be at least a place to start to look at. And I, yeah. I, I do think that, um, I mean, I think that solar has a place, um, but I think it's something we need to, with more pressure and demand on, on property now, we need to look at and say, where is the, you know, not necessarily what's the best, where's the best and highest use for solar, but what's the best and highest use for land and where should we try to push solar? I mean, well, Gary, did, didn't the town of Mexico put in where they would accept solar in mm -hmm. their plan? So that you can kind of at least say, hey, look, we will accept it here, we won't accept it other places. We have well, a solar policy like a excellent. lot of communities do, and it's, ours is very restrictive in how it's written. And uh, in order for them to build, they have to get through it quite a process to get a variance to build the project. Okay, excellent. I mean, in my reading, I try to read as much as I can. It's brownfields, played out, gravel beds, um, garbage dumps. Those areas are acceptable. But don't clear cut beautiful forest land or hijack farmland. Yeah. I think that that was sort of the what they wanted to have happen. And I think what's happened, and I think some of that has happened. Uh, they've looked at brownfields and stuff, but. For these projects, the most critical thing is being able to connect into a substation that can, that can accept their power. So that's where they're looking. They're looking for where substations are that can accept power. And if it's a brownfield, then great. But if it's not a brownfield, well, they, they still need to connect into power. Yeah, there, there was two projects on the North Shore that um, the companies invested in that are not going forward because the infrastructure cannot handle it. Yeah. National Grid canceled it. Yeah. And it, that's not about the local. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, variances are sure. Yep. So, um, and then, any other, sorry, I know we went on a little tangent there. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, The last one I wanted to, to um, update you on is that um, the Village of Phoenix, we, we said the last time they won the New York Forward uh, competition, four and a half million dollars for the Village of Phoenix. Um, they are starting now their they, their local planning commission. Um, I've been selected to be the co-chair along with uh, Jim Lynch for the uh, the New York Forward Local Planning Commission. And so there will start being organizational meetings and, and uh, with the state as well as the um, uh, planning um, group that was selected for that project. So it's great. Um, we're already meeting internally with the um, le uh, local leadership down there to say, hey, what what should what are the priorities where we think they are? Let's identify some other funding sources so that we can take four and a half million and stretch it into ten or twenty million. You know, I mean that's that's really what you want to do is take their money, figure out where you can get other state money and other things, and then really take that four and a half and just just expand it out as far as you can. And so, how with that additional money are we close to the final dot? <laughs> uh, I asked them about so. The money hasn't been allocated yet. So four and a half million has been allocated to the Village of Phoenix. How that's split up between different projects has not been identified yet. They, the Village of Phoenix put together a proposal, which was accepted and said, we like what your proposal is. Now you need to get down in detail in terms of what the projects are and, 
And the other thing that we'll see now, because we saw the same thing in the city of Fulton and the city of Oswego, the DRIs, is that you have your projects that come around during the application phase, and then you have all these other things that come around now that the money's there. And so you may see developers come around now that weren't there before. The other thing that's different and unique about this is that when this whole process was playing out and they, they were they made their pitch to the state, I think it was right around the same time that Micron had announced. So their, their application, their plan didn't really address any of that. So there may be some other things that come about now and say, well, we want to do a, a mixed use project with commercial and housing and things like that, which will, which, you know, could bubble up to the surface now that may not have been there before. So you might you might see some new projects come around that weren't in the initial mix of their proposal. Well, I know the wastewater was in their it initial. It was, and I've, so. I've expressed to them that that's sort of the bottleneck, that none of these other things happen if you can't address that. Right. So hopefully, and but it will also come down to the state. The state has the final say in what projects are selected to get funding. Yeah. So they can put together their proposal, their priority, say what they want, what it needs, and then the state will... I thought that was a difference between the New York Forward and the DRI, that the state doesn't have as much to say on the New York Forward. They DRI, it's very... They, they still do. It's, it's, it's like baby DRI, really, but there, there's, <laughs> yeah. there, are, there are some changes. So a municipal project could be 100% funded through New York Forward versus DRI couldn't be. And right. So there, there are some changes, but it's... They have more freedom, that's, A little bit, yeah. But in essence, it's still... The state is going to have final say. Well, but it is the first time we're doing it, so I mean, I'm, I'm only, I'm only saying what I know. I don't yeah. until we actually see how it goes. It's yeah. a little bit of. Well, it's life. Yep. Any other questions on that? Okay. The only thing that I'd like to end up before we end the meeting is, if anybody hasn't seen this, I know legislators, we were given it, but if anybody knows, uh, this is a coloring contest that comes every single year through Oswego County Fair Housing Council. And if you know of any child care centers or schools that you have that they could do this, kids can get an uh, awards for it. It's just a cute little thing for the county. There's um, there's copies up here if you'd like one. So I just wanted to add that. Right. I'd like to uh, make a motion to reconsider an earlier motion. That was the, uh, the motion for Oswego County uh, or Oswego Harbor Trust. I do. I think that in order to reconsider, it has to be made by someone who voted on the prevailing side. I did. No, the prevailing. Oh, the prevailing side. Yeah. You can't reconsider based on. Okay. You certain? I am ninety percent certain. I can go grab a. I think you're I right. Grab the I actually, I think you're right. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Never mind. So, unless there's anything else to discuss, is there, yes. ah, David? On, on that point, um, these all still go to finance and then back to government. So, that doesn't mean that another committee couldn't suggest that this go forward, knowing that it didn't get approved at EDP. So, that's the purpose of having this go to multiple stops before it gets to the floor, is so that all your colleagues get to weigh in at one point or the other. So um, while you didn't approve it today, finance could approve it, um, or it could be amended on, on the floor. So finance has to be told that it was not approved. Yes. Yeah. No. Um, that that that's when I report this to finance that they understand what's been done and what's hasn't been approved, right? And then. It doesn't get, this form doesn't get amended until it goes before the floor. So if there's been no suggestion that that move forward, when it comes to the floor, it won't be on the schedule. But so far it's been tradition in this pattern that if it doesn't get through the local committee, it doesn't go, FEP has not moved it forward so far, from what I understand. Correct. Yeah. But I did it, so it's going to go forward. Remember that. <laughs> no. You should have your say once. No, 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 no. Uh, I can get a motion to, uh, okay, motion. And cop second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you, everybody. Good.